feel very much like the father in that how long, how long must we, we must go through these types of events. I was reminded the term, the phrase that is often used that how you the measure of a society is how they treat the least among us. And what I get here and feel really badly about that Luis was treated as he was the least among us. He was homeless, and the manner in which he was approached and ultimately attacked clearly indicated there was a lack of regard for him as a human being. Lack of regard for his own spirituality, his own presence, that he was, in essence, you know, uh, someone's husband, someone had family members, there were people who cared about him, even those in the community in which he lived, out there in the neighborhood. But it seems that there was no respect given to that, that he was not treated in any way, with any regard. And all of you know that we've been involved in the Mario Woods case, and it was the same kind of senselessness or lack of regard for him that we see here. Because again, this is another so-called edge weapon that was used in it as if a person has a knife, it is a death warrant that has been signed on them. It doesn't matter what they did, what they were doing before, the fact that they had a knife in and of itself is a basis to use deadly force. That's just fundamentally wrong. Uh, it is not constitutional. And it really is against proper training proper assessments, and, and, and against 21st century policing, which has been part of the president's overall evaluation of modern policing. And part of modern policing is that you don't create confrontations. You don't, just because a person has a knife, doesn't then mean you must create a circumstance, create a condition. As I euphemistically say, you can't create a confrontation and fight your way out of it and shoot your way out of it when there was no basis in the first place to create the confrontation. And so on, in that regard and in that spirit, we are very fortunate and very happy and pleased that we can represent Luis and his family because in situations of this, it is very important that when someone's life is taken improperly or that the police is in fact used deadly force that should not be used, that there has to be a voice that speaks up, that cries out, that says this will not stand. And all of us from the legal side have that perspective. We also believe that the community should have that perspective as well. This should not stand and will not stand. And that Luis is worthy of the same considerations that everyone else is worthy of in terms of constitutional protections. And that's what we're about, and that's why we're here. Mm. We have filed this claim uh, today against the city and county of San Francisco, alleging that these officers use excessive force, that they violated his civil rights, certainly his state civil rights for now, and they mean that this was a wrongful death intentional wrong for death, that he received a number of shots, deadly shots, that he should not have received. Fundamentally, the facts are very simple, that he was on the street, minding his own business, initially playing with a soccer ball. There had been some calls that had been made that are not related to him. And the police arrived upon the scene, and within a very short period of time, this man who was kicking his soccer ball against the wall and sitting against the wall when the police confronted him, was shot dead. And one of those shot him in the top of his head. There is no excuse for what happened then, other than a lack of regard, a lack of respect for this is a human being. And it was done in large measure, I believe, because of the condition in which he lived, and that these officers just, in fact, used deadly force because they could, not knowing that people would care. And, and that's why we're here. Now, the allegations that we have, quite frankly, go to the whole statutory issues of use of excessive force, soft battery, wrongful death, um, and
and state civil rights violations. We have brought this out in these claims, which is the first step before you file a lawsuit on behalf of his wife, he had an existing wife, and three adult children, all of whom have lost the relationship that they had. It is not for us to judge what type of relationship he had, but it was his relationship, and it was their relationship, and that relationship has been fundamentally destroyed forever.